Jessica Sampson from the Livestock Marketing Information Center is our cattle market analyst this week. The August 1st inventory of U.S. cattle and calves on feed totaled 10.2 million head, up 2% from a year ago. Placements were also 2% higher. The USDA's cattle on feed report released last Friday showed a different trend for Nebraska. This state's inventory was down 5% while placements were down 10%. In the grocery store, consumers have had the chance to buy the cheapest beef in months. The average cost for all fresh retail beef averaged $5.75 per pound in July, the lowest price since January. We talked with Jessica here Wednesday morning and began by looking at recent price movements in live and feeder cattle markets. So in August, obviously, across the industry, we saw a collapse in cattle prices. Um, a lot of factors built up to that. Mainly, we were just backing up fat cattle, we were backing up feeder cattle, and they all came to the market, and the market didn't handle it quite as well. Since then, we've come up from those lows, um, but definitely lower than the beginning of 2015. So we've been tracking lower, we've been tracking more of our seasonally normal, historically normal price levels. If you think 2010 to 2011, 12, kind of around there, um, we're actually really seeing pretty similar prices 2012 and 2013. So in terms of price levels, 15, 20% lower than year ago. Year ago was still record highs up until August. Um, moving into fourth quarter, we do not expect a similar price collapse as we saw last year. Um, we've been much more current on fat cattle marketings, which pulls in more feeder cattle, much more current on those as well. So we don't expect to see another collapse in the market in fourth quarter. Let's talk about the cattle on feed report. We saw U.S. placements and inventory that were up 2% each, but Nebraska was way below that. Uh, why is that? Right, and that was definitely a difference in the trend, especially for Nebraska looking at um, most recent months. We've seen higher placements in Nebraska. We've seen a transition of uh, cattle on feed in Nebraska because that's where we're growing more corn. Um, so this was different, and I didn't see any obvious immediate reasons for it. Um, some of the, the reasons I was wondering is if we've seen Better, we see better pasture conditions in Nebraska right now than kind of the, the southern plains if we think about Oklahoma and Texas and Kansas. Um, so maybe there's still some more calves and yearlings out there out on grass waiting for this market price to come up slightly into the fourth quarter. I think that could be one of the bigger reasons. How do you think uh, cow numbers, cull cow numbers for slaughtering will change and what could that be an indicator of? Sure, and that, that's a really good question, important number we look at to indicate what herd inventory is doing. Um, so if we look at year to date cow slaughter, beef cow slaughter, we're up about 10% compared to last year. Um, that's a pretty normal change that we were expecting this year. And right now it still just indicates a slowdown in herd growth, not a reversal. So we're not seeing people reducing their herd size. Um, you know, when you keep a cow an additional year or two, you don't have that many extra years you can keep her. So this is why we expected to see this increase in, in slaughter cows. And we're moving into the fall months here and we'll continue to see that increase. That's when the majority of your cows go to the marketplace. Um, but it's not a huge number by any means yet. And same with heifer slaughter. Year to date, we've actually are, are about 1% below last year's in terms of number of head, um, but we, we have started to see more heifers show up at the packer at the auction, well at the packer, excuse me, uh, these last couple of weeks and we'd expect that to continue, but not huge increases relative to last year. So slow down in herd growth, but uh, not a reversal. How do you think beef consumption has held up here as we approach the end of grilling season? Well, beef consumption is doing well and a lot of times we'll confuse consumption with demand. So consumption is purely just the supply available per person in the U.S. So if we factor in price into that as well, um, and we talk about beef demand. You know, if we think about our big holiday month so far this year, uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, we're working into Labor Day. We saw an uptick in um, essentially throughput of beef from the grocery store, the consumer, but it wasn't quite as exciting as we were hoping for it to be. So based on our demand index that we calculate, um, demand slowed down some this year, but not drastically at all. We're, we're talking about slight changes, um, slight decreases. The price of beef at the grocery store has come down, so that's great news for the consumer. Now we're just waiting for that volume movement to, to match up with this price decrease. So, you know, we haven't seen quite as good a movement, but I think that there's a lot of potential for that to improve into this year and into 2017. Can you describe how the packer has done during that time? <laughs> I Yes. Um, you know, we don't have really hard numbers on these packer margins. So what we do to look at that is we take the difference of the live animal that fed steer price and compare it to the cutout price. So what the packer buys versus what the packer sells. Obviously, this isn't including any labor costs, energy costs, overhead, anything like that. 
Um, but the Packers had a very good year. They've been above year ago on that margin all year so far. Um, and what that really comes down to is the, the price of the Fed steers come down more so than the cutout prices come down. And that cutout price translates to the retail price. You know, we've seen those retail prices come down compared to their highs of last year, but not quite as much as, as kind of the wholesale or the, the live animal prices have come down. So Packers are doing well uh, in terms of the numbers that we can see. And, um, you know, how, good news for them, but we'll see if it trickles through. Yeah, how well are producers doing? Right, so definitely not as well. I mean, we're, we're cow-calf guys, are, there's still money to be made. You know, if we look at our estimated average returns to cow-calf operations, if you include pasture rent, we're still looking at about $100 a cow on those returns. Obviously significantly lower than the $500 a cow seen a couple years ago, and that's hard to come down from, but uh, more to historically normal levels for those returns. So there's still money to be made, but these lower prices have hit the, the live animal side, the cow-calf stalkers, feedlots, much harder than they've hit the packer. You see eroding prices through 2018. Correct. Tell me why. You know, the, the cyclically eroding prices comes with the increase in the cattle inventory. We saw pretty significant increases starting 2014, really saw them in 2015. We expect to see, continue to see inventory increases in 2016 and 17, but not as large. And that just lends itself to cyclically lower prices. Increase in supply, lower prices on the market, um, and we expect that through 2018 right now.